start from there. Is the microphone volume up? Yep. Are you sure? Judith Lester, the most famous woman painter of the Dutch Golden Age, was remarkable for her time. She had pursued a profession dominated by men. She was the only female member of the Painters Guild to have had her own workshop, and is the sole woman artist whose known work attests to an active role in the open market. Even though Judith Lester holds such a high title, her mostly undocumented past has left her story on how she made such a profound impact on the history of women a foreign subject to the modern thinkers. Judith Lester was born July 28, 1609, in Harlem to Jan Willemetz Lester. She was born as the eighth child of Jan, who was a local cloth maker and a brewer. Her art career was said to have started when her father filed bankruptcy and the burden was brought down on Judith to bring funds to the family. Her career choice was odd due to the fact that her family had very strong ties to the fabric industry although it is said that the patterns and designs on the fabric could have inspired Judith to pick up the paintbrush when she was a child. During her family's move to the Providence of Utrecht, Judith was said to have learned to paint by a local man who was running a respected workshop in her hometown of Harlem, Franz Petiritz de Greber. By the time she was 18, Lester was already mentioned favorably in a book about the culture in Harlem. Within the next few years, she established her own workshop and took on apprentices who were all, as far as documents indicate, young men. Judith's first piece was dated 1629, 20 years after she was born, before her marriage to the painter Jan Minnes Molenester in 1636, who fathered her children. Judith Lester managed to have an independent career as an artist. This was no small feat for a woman in the 17th century. Judith Lester was one of the most important Dutch painters of her time because she predominantly painted people. While that's not the limit of her painting, she did paint some still life, like many other artists of this time. She went above and beyond that by painting people in extraordinary detail, partaking in their everyday activities. While looking at her pieces of work, you can see that her favorite activity to paint was the art of music. This is said because many of the people portrayed in her paintings are partaking in this activity. This can also be seen in her most famous painting, her self-portrait. This is a man, there's a man in the background playing the fiddle. She's pictured painting this man onto a canvas. By 1633, she was a member of the Harlem Guild of St. Luke, a painter's guild said to have no evidence that it left that it even existed. Lester was the first female painter to be registered with his painter's guild, but not the first woman registered. It is also said that her self-portrait has been proposed as her presentation piece to the Guild, although other sources say that she did not publish this piece until 1635, right before she was married. The first woman registered was Sarah van Ballenberg in 1631, who, like Lester, was not a member of an established artist family in Harlem, and she also married another painter, Bernd van Eisen. These two women were not the only women artists at this time in Harlem. There were more women painters, but they did not need to register with the guild because they were members of established families who worked in their own family-owned workshops. Judith then did something unheard of. She took on three male apprentices after she opened her own workshop, just two years after she entered the artist's guild. After some controversy over her apprentices not being registered with the guild, another artist by the name of Franz Halls stealing one of her students, and some questions rose as history was looked into further, especially during the 1600s in Harlem. How was it seen that men were learning art from a woman? Or that a woman was becoming so famous within the art world, especially since women were supposed to be mothers and wives, and that was all. With that in mind, it's not hard to wonder if her success among a man's world contributed to her work's 
of art being credited to that same male artist who was accused of stealing one of her students. The works were credited to him after her death, February 10, 1660, until 1893. As more information is uncovered and explored about Judith Lester, the most famous female Dutch artist during the Dutch Golden Age, it is hard not to learn about her contributions to the art world and what her most famous painting portrayed. Her contributions to the art world as a citizen of the Dutch Republic are unprecedented and commendable. Judith Lester was, has a particular style that she portrays a bit in each of her paintings, and that is a woman's point of view. This can be seen in her piece, The Proposition, painted in 1631. She's throwing, showing the woman's side of a man's seduction scene, where as a man would paint all participants in a sexual seduction scene as willing, Judith did not paint those activities in the same light. She painted them showing the woman an uninterest, as uninterested and unwilling to participate in this man's offering, even though he is offering a significant amount of money. In her painting, The Proposition, the seamstress is wearing a very plain, modest clothing. You can see this because her garments go all the way to her neck. This is in comparison to other paintings at this time who would paint in her position, particularly falling out her, of their dresses. The seamstress is seated in the dark working on her pattern, with no other male figure around to, to protect her, thus leaving her very vulnerable. The man hanging over her, touching her arm, holding up a coin as an offering for sexual favors, leads to her expression of solitude. She shows no real expression. She is simply trying to ignore the man and his advances towards her, so that maybe he will get bored and go away. Judith was one of the few artists that showed this scene, or proposition, from a woman's point of view. Other man artists depict all parties, including the woman subject to prostitution, as happy and willing to participate in the trade for money and sexual favors. For example, Dick, Dirk van Bar Barberen, the Procurus, 1622, shows willing women. The older woman is demanding payment for the man, while the younger woman is singing and looking very happily into the eyes of her customer, like she is going to enjoy her next move. The artist shows that all parties involved in the scene really enjoy the activity of prostitution and are ready to move forward with enjoying themselves. This is a large contrast to the way Judith depicts the same scene. Many artists of this age paint a variety of scenes detailing the brothel or pro prostitution or proposition scenes, and they just do not seem to understand why Judith painted hers in the view that she did. Gerard Turbach, who painted The Suitor's Visit, 1658, who depicts a controversial scene. Is this a respectable offering of marriage, or is this one of the quiet, high-class brothel scenes? There are some of the controversial topics that Judith painted brought up with her view as a woman. Judith Leister, an independent artist with her own workshop in Her own workshop in Pupilis had a talent for painting lively scenes of people enjoying themselves in the taverns or playing music. Lester's painting fall, paintings fall into two categories, mid-sized brushy canvases like Mary Company, depicting scene, music makers and caressers, and small, more precise, nocturnal vignettes on panel. Both types of work are aimed squarely at the 17th century Dutch market for genre scenes, though they are far from generic. The Dutch artist had her own workshop, her own students, and her own style, one that combined the spontane spontaneity of Hall's brushwork with a carvagius cherisuro. Since it is said that Judith trained with accomplished painters from the Painters Guild, she was associated with Mr. Halls. This could have a large part as to why her paintings were attributed to him for almost 200 years after her death. It is said that her paintings were actually adjusted in some ways so that the depiction of further work would fall to Halls. Her mammogram was lightly painted over with Halls' signature, and some of her artwork was found to have large layers of paint on them that removed figures from the foreground, taking away from the scene that Judith depicted. Therefore, it would be easier for Halls to depict his paintings. After an investigation was launched and a lot of the paintings that Judith did were found to actually belong to her, 
It is said that the museums that held them took them down and put them in storage because they were found to be painted by a woman. It was not until the rise of the woman artist around 300 years after Judith's death that her work was both published and attributed to her. By the time Judith was 27, she was married, was said to have three to five children with Jan Minis Molinaire, and was said to have painted less and less. There's more controversy over why she stopped painting. Some say it could have been because she was too busy taking up domestic duties, being a mother and a wife, while other sources say that she was helping her husband, who becomes a very well-known artist, an accredited artist as well, with his works of art while they ran the family business. Although I myself believe that Judith was wise beyond her years and had her own reasoning, she would not her own reasoning. She would not have gotten to where she was without knowing a thing or two. Her life story proves that she knew what steps she needed to take to become a skilled painter, but also that she lived on out her life in a manner that was conductive to her achieving her goals.